Donna says, you need to create a policy and procedure around XYZ. And so I pulled up my word processor and I stood there and stared at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing happened. <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing... Dun, 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 dun. Before I tell you, <laughs> let me introduce you. I love doing that. The suspense is killing people. Uh, <laughs> so I'm David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs, and joining me as always is Donna Grendel of Cardin Compliance. How's it going, Donna? It's going quite well. How about you, David? Uh, I, I'm doing good. Today's the first official day of summer for my kids. They're out of school. <laughs> so uh, and you had, I'm thrilled you to had your first one graduate. Yeah, I did. So I finally got one through. <laughs> <laughs> Although that doesn't mean anything, but yes, got you got one four through. more to go. <laughs> Congratulations, Dad. Yeah. So, of course, the fun part now is what are we going to do now? <laughs> I don't have anything to do, Dad. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, sometimes it's not so cut and dry. You know, some people's like, oh, yeah, as soon as we graduate, we're going to move on to, to this college or we're going to do this career path or whatever. But Unfortunately, my first one is kind of like, well, I don't really want to do anything. <laughs> uh, so it's going to, uh, and of course, you know, you and I have talked about it too. He's a, he's a unique. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've got to, um, got to work to figure out what we're going to do next. So mm, got to do that. I'm, I'm looking into, some military service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I think it'll be a good for him. Well, you but, tried um, to get him to work with you, so that, yeah. Oh, yeah, there which that's probably worse than military service, but I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> so today's topic, now that you've hung in there for a couple of minutes, <laughs> we are going to talk about the dreaded policies and procedures that you have to have. But we're going to kind of go into a direction specifically in dealing with templates because that's always a question that comes up about creating policies and procedures. If you did like I did initially a long time ago, Donna says, you need to create a policy and procedure around XYZ. And so I pulled up my word processor and I stood there and stared at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing happened. <laughs> so... You know, for those of you who can just out of the blue write your own policies and procedures, my hat's off to you. But for a lot of us, we need a kind of a starting place, and and templates are are there. That's kind of hard to say sometimes. Templates. How's that? <laughs> so hard to say? templates are uh, a good starting place for that. However, they come with some caveats and some things that you should be aware of. And there's, I guess, proper ways to use them and not use them, as well as some other things we'll talk about. So, uh, what do you think about the whole policy and procedure templates, Donna? Oh, I believe that you're right. You absolutely need to have some sort of a starting point, a format or any kind of thing like that. And that's why everybody looks for the templates. I don't think templates are bad. In fact, we're going to repeat this multiple times. We are not <laughs> saying you should not use HIPAA policy and procedure templates. We're just saying don't use them as an easy fix. And that's what happens, is they become an easy fix for people. It is not the panacea, because I came up with that word to use today. It is not the panacea that many people <laughs> are trying to meet. And in fact, these are not the droids you seek. <laughs> <laughs> for all the Star Wars fans. Yeah, these are not the droids you seek. But they they're the basis to kind of give you something so that when you are staring at the screen, there's something on it. <laughs> yeah. and But the problem that I've seen, you've probably seen it too, is that sometimes people will take the template and literally only change the thing that says, put your practice name here. Uh, well, actually, we've seen some where they didn't even do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> your name goes here is in their policy and procedure. So uh, we've seen that. We've seen people proud that they did change it. Mm -hmm. But often when, you know, we talked about before that uh, for us, generally when we go in, we're going to say, do you have a recent 
assessment of your compliance program. And we look at the whole program. We're not going to do just a security assessment, which is what most people do. They just say, here's your security assessment. And even then, it's not the way that big picture looks at it. It's they've run some tools. But we do the assessment. And then in the assessment, what an assessment is supposed to do is say, do you have these things? Are you doing these things? And you say... Yes. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> no. And kind of. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of kind of. And that's what the assessment's about is to look for where there's gaps in things and help you build your plan. And then you audit the things that you say you're doing or your plan to see if it's actually happening. That's what the audits are for. But none of that involves giving you policy and procedure templates, which is what people always ask. If you do our assessment, will you give us the policy and procedures? Uh, the assessment asks if you have them. If you're asking <laughs> me for them, we already know the answer to a bunch of them. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, clearly uh, there's some issues there. But the assessment doesn't include, in, from our perspective, and, and, you know, if you look at what an assessment is, it shouldn't include giving you, give you policies and procedures. So mm -hmm. what they're looking for is get a template and update it all for me and then just hand it to me. Right. Now, what's wrong with that picture? Well, what it is is you start to get where you're, you're having to, well, first of all, it's probably not going to work. But anyway, <laughs> what you're basically saying is that I'm going to change my business to fit the policy. Other, what you should be doing is making the policy fit how you do business. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to say, here's my policies and procedures. I have them. I don't know what's in them. I've never read them. them. <laughs> I don't follow them. I follow my own internal policies, not these HIPAA policies, because mm -hmm. I have them because that's what came with my assessment. I mean, what are you going to do the next time? You do yeah, and we've already you seen know. we've already seen fines around that very thing where somebody has a policy and they did not follow it. Yeah, they mention it in multiple resolutions that they had templates and never <laughs> completed them, or they had policies and never followed them. You know those kind of things, as well as the cases where they don't have them. So that's why I say policy and procedure template is not this panacea that solves the problem. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this ability to use the templates, while we're saying uh, that you can use them, they're just not an easy fix, we look at how many different places you can get them. And that this becomes an issue when people say, will you give them to me? Well, first of all, how do I know whatever ones I have are reasonable and appropriate in your environment? You know, there's ones where if I gave you the ones that, say, uh, an attorney has published and this attorney's version is appropriate for, say, a hospital environment. And in a hospital environment, you, you know, it's a very formal thing and it's got you know, ID numbers and all of these kind of things. And each individual requirement has its own policy. Well, you've got – and I take a one-doctor group – <laughs> I mean, come on. There's some mm -hmm. of that stuff they never do. So you've got to filter through all of that. Well, that's not reasonable and appropriate, would you say? No. And then you throw in a business associate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> business associates. Yeah, you're right. Don't forget that. The business associates are asking for it too. So you got ones that you can get from attorneys. You got ones that the professional organizations will give you. Uh, there's, you know, AAPC, AMA, all these guys. Many of them will sell you policy and procedure templates for, you know, as little as $25 or $50 or something like that. And in a lot of cases, if it's a, let's say you're in a specialty and you get the templates from your specialty professional organization, say oncology or whatever, they may be more reasonable and appropriate than anything I would be able to give you. Mm -hmm. Or if you're like me and you're writing policy and procedure templates and you're a business associate, <laughs> yeah, most all the other templates don't <laughs> don't do anything for you. You know, I look at the ones 
like I had I had a client hand me some of theirs a couple of years ago, and they were like, "Here, you can use this as a kind of to go by." And as I was looking through it, I'm like, "I can't really use any of this stuff." <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't apply to me at all, right? <laughs> and so to say that I'm going to get this from an IT vendor, so they would ask you for them. I know they ask you for them all the time. They ask me for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got the uh, ONC publishes a security policy template. You can just get it. And it's, it's, it's very doable. You can work with it. And you can just buy it from mm-hmm. other people like vendors who sell. Here we're selling policies and procedures. And they have tools to build them. And in those different ones that they sell, there's different types. So, you know, I know people that say, I, you know, little air quotes, write them for you. The ones where I'm going to write them for you. If I write them for you, what's the chance of you even knowing what they're in, what's in them? Or how do I know how your management is structured? So in the cases where I have written policies and procedures for people, because I do, People can hire me to go in and do that. But I sit down and I meet with you and I say, okay, person A, who's going to make the decisions and approve these policies and who's going to develop the procedures on how to implement them? And we work all of that out and it's written down basically after we talk about it. So I'm doing the development, but I'm not like in some little vacuum where I don't know anything about your organization. Right. They should be asking a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you'll get this giant Word document. <laughs> Other times you'll download a zip file and it's full of Word documents. Reference the ones that are appropriate for a hospital versus you. you. Some of them you just log in and you fill in a few blanks and now online are all your policies. You just get them there. And mm-hmm. then there's our favorite one where it asks you a bunch of questions And now we're going to spit out your policies and procedures because they're saying they're going to solve this problem that uh, we're talking about, uh, about not being reasonable appropriate and not meeting your business. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to do it by asking you a bunch of questions and we'll generate the policies and procedures. Right. What happens then? (laughs) Uh, I guess it depends on how good the tool is. Well, yeah. And is the tool geared towards a hospital where it's going to ask all those details? Or is the tool geared towards a business associate and you're a covered entity or vice versa? You, mm-hmm. you never know what's going to happen until you're in there. So you got to pay them and then you get in there and start answering questions. And yeah. particularly the security ones. You know, those are. Uh, when you compare what's reasonable and appropriate in one environment versus another, it's a dramatic difference in the way the security rule can be applied in some of that addressable stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and it's you know you mentioned the security rule part of it, and you know particularly the technical aspects. In most cases, you're going to want to get your IT vendor involved. You know, if you if you have one and if you have a HIPAA compliant one, because there's just going to be questions in there you're not going to know. Uh, some of the questions I get asked often are, you know, related to what type of setup they have. Do they have a server? Are they doing user authentication? Just a lot of stuff. In some cases, they are doing that. In some cases, they're not. Mm-hmm. And, because there again, we'll go back to the reasonable and appropriate. And, you know, you have a, if I have a client come to me and they've got, you know, two or three computers and two or three employees, you know, I can't really justify putting in, you know, six to $10,000 worth of equipment to do user authentication. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, I know what to do more than that, but, you know, they're looking at me going, oh, this little checklist says I need to be able to be doing this um, and I need to have it done. And I said, yeah, but it's not really reasonable and appropriate for you to have all this equipment in here to do this one thing. Yeah, we, um, we can do it a different way. Yeah, we have to look at some other methods that we can do that. But you know, or you know, I've even seen where the the wife is the uh, the physician, and they have one other person working in the office, and that's it. I mean, why, you know, it's, you need user authentication for your EMR, and that can be handled separately. And but it, having all that just for 
two people logging into two different computers. Yeah, there's different ways to handle that. That's a lot more reasonable and appropriate. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's things like the Jump Cloud tool and and all. It, 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 it way reasonable um, mm-hmm. that we could set up. And there, there's so many different ways to approach some of this stuff. But that again is pointing out why you can't just take these templates and generate the stuff, make a few changes, and boom, you're done. Mm-hmm. You actually have to go through them. Yep. And say, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? And yes, we work with you and help you do that. So when people say, will you give them to me? We have to say no. But we're trying to find a way to get people to understand that don't just look for these templates and think, well, uh, if you'll give me my template, then I'm going to hire you because you're going to do my template. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, and in most cases, what they're talking about really, and we we may dive into this a little bit more, but... They're really talking about the policy. So your your policy is this is what we're going to do. And I don't know how you feel about it, but typically a policy to me is fairly cut and dry. Yeah. It's the it's the procedure part when you start writing that out, which is how are we going to do the policy? That's when it gets tricky. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that that is where you really talk about the difference between you know adapting your business to what the policy says versus writing the policy, the procedure to go with how you can do this within your business. Mm-hmm. Now, we're not saying don't do it. We're saying the policy says we're going to do X. And you're right. It's pretty cut and dry. And a lot of times the policy will just say, we're going to follow HIPAA is essentially <laughs> what it says. <laughs> what that law says, yeah, what that said. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. And uh, the, But you have to have the procedure that says how are we going to do it. And often when you get these templates, it'll actually have a section that says, fill in your procedure here. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people that just write in, we're going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, essentially that's what they say. It doesn't actually say how they're going to do it. And and then you go into the places and and you say, "Can let me see your (laughs) policy and procedure manual. And everybody looks at each other and they go, where did we put that? (laughs) And, you know, we got them back in, blah, 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 blah. And then they say, oh, you know, it's in so-and-so's old office. They were the compliance officer. <laughs> and nobody's cleared out that bookshelf. And they go in, and I mean, literally, you know, they they, they don't even know which one it is. They pull out a three-ring binder, and it, you feel like you're in some uh, movie scene pulling out, you know, the treasure map that's been in hiding forever <laughs> and it's all covered in dust and they whoo, blow off the dust and they open it and it goes <laughs> and moths yeah. fly out. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly you're following these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and that could go into the whole discussion about training. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Because you can't, you know, if you're not looking at them, you're not training on them, then you don't know what they say. And if you don't know what they say, you're not following them. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was recently in a fairly sizable medical office and was talking with uh, one of the employees, the higher, one of the higher ranking employees, not not the uh, HIPAA officer. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I said, what is your, you know, what is your policy around, you know, X, Y, Z? And they were like, um... You have to talk to our HIPAA officer about that, <laughs> our <laughs> privacy and compliance officer. I was like, okay, but you don't you don't have a vague, any vague idea about what it is because you know I'm doing the IT work. Uh, I wasn't doing any work for them at the moment, but I was just inter- doing some interview stuff for some work, and I said I need to know what my guidelines are that I'm working around, <laughs> and, and they told me I need to talk to the compliance officer, and then uh, I said, well, you know, I mean, surely you, you do training, you know, monthly or Something. I mean, and she looked at me like, uh, we had training a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you don't even do it annually, which you know how I feel about annually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, uh, no. <laughs> we had somebody come in and for 45 minutes, they told us all about HIPAA during lunch. Yeah. I don't think they even had that. But, yeah. you know, that goes to the whole policy and procedure manual, though. I mean, you, you kind of need to pull that thing out every so often and, and just do a little quick training session on some of the stuff. And, you know, this is what the policy is. Like you said, the policy is fairly cut and dry. We're going to do X, Y, Z. And then the procedure is how are we going to do that? You know, 
if your policy is we're going to do workstation security, then how are you going to do that? Mm-hmm. You know, what what policy or what procedures are you going to put in place? Uh, these are the ones where we always hear, this is not convenient. Our password changes every six months. <laughs> <laughs> we got to stop that. Yeah. Oh, okay. is there any way we can remove all the passwords because it's taken us too long to log in? Well, and, and you know, you bring <laughs> up a very good point here is they hire the IT company. IT company comes in and they start doing what the IT company does as their standard for their clients, right? Mm-hmm. Right. In the meantime, what do your policies and procedures say you're going to be doing under the security rule? Yes. Because if they don't know what you're supposed to be doing, even if they don't even know the policies, then how can they possibly provide what you're supposed to do under your policies and procedures? Plus, the procedure may say, ask the IT company for it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you can put some reasonable stuff in there to say, yes, we're going to get this from a third party and we're going to require that they report on it or whatnot. And you should have some way of confirming that activity is taking place. We both know that uh, sometimes activity doesn't take place. Mm -hmm. But the question I always have is, if you aren't looking at your policies and procedures and you're counting on your IT company to make security, quote-unquote, work, then how is it possible that anything is going to be done along your policies and procedure requirements? Right. If no one's looking, and maybe you know that you have them, but your IT company doesn't know about it. So it's like your employees need to understand what's in there, some of your vendors need to understand what's in there, And it needs to meet what is reasonable and appropriate for your organization. You're right. Is it overkill? Because if you have overkill in there that says stuff like, we're going to have this authentication server, blah, 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 and you got a doctor and one employee, and the whole overkill thing, you end up never doing it. So guess what? Mm -hmm. Now you're in that group of, well, we have the policies and procedures, but we're not doing it. Right. Yeah. And and, see, we've got things where... Let's say we're giving somebody the ability to remotely access our systems. Uh, I, even though their policy may say we're going to change our password every 90 days or 180 days, our systems will not allow us to go beyond 60. So we have to tell the client, regardless of what your policy says, you're going to have to make that 60 days mm-hmm. because we can't we can't do anything longer than that because our security won't allow us to do it. And so they have to go in and edit that policy based on that. Yeah, to say you know, this to this. And and you can make those things happen, but you don't want to end up in the position where somebody goes and looks at your policy because, oh, they actually want to follow it. And they're like, well, how do I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know Mm -hmm. what I'm supposed to do. And there's, you know, there's a lot of places that their onboarding process, they uh, have uh, supposedly this procedure list and book that they have the employees sign that they've read. And uh, I'm pretty sure that employees aren't going to read those big, long policies and procedures. Mm -mm. And even if they do on their first day of work, and then you never show it to them again or review it with them again, do you think they even remember it's in there? Mm -mm. So it's something where... Not only do you need to have something to start with, like you're right, don't be staring at the screen, having no idea what to do, (laughs) (laughs) but you need something that you understand and that you can train your staff on and you can use your vendors to complete the requirements. And please don't just say, you know, if you have a policy, you know, HIPAA requires antivirus malware protection and, you know, we just, did an episode on this, so good example. Mm-hmm. It requires it, and the policy says you're going to do it, and then your procedure is, let's say, we're going to hire a third party to handle this for us. Okay. Well, the third party, hello, IT company, you need to be able to say, here is how we're going to handle it for you, and it's in writing, and... We're going to generate some reports or something to show 
you know, how we're doing, and somebody actually is looking at them and those kind of things. Otherwise, why even have them? It might as well be the we don't even have them. <laughs> so if you can't make sure that you even know what's in them because you didn't write them yourself or you filled in answers to these questionnaires and it spit them out and you didn't even understand the questions. Now, that's a good one. Yeah. I don't even know what this question – some of the questions – I look at them and I'm like, I don't even know what that's talking about. You have to look at it within <laughs> context. So people will send me, what does this mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Read the whole paragraph before and after it. And then <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can, tell can you. you tell me a section or, <laughs> or something? So it's definitely something that is a big picture item. It's not something, as we often say, HIP is not just something you check off the list. Mm-mm. You don't want what's cheapest and easiest. It's not going to solve the problem. Yeah. Well, it's particularly in this topic, you, you tend to find those people who are one extreme or the other. They're either looking for the quick, easy, you know, let me get this done in a weekend. And then you have the other people that, you know, they, they make it so complicated and convoluted that it, it almost makes it impossible to even follow the policy and procedure because of the way they have it written. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times those big environment ones, the you know, the attorneys are involved and all of that. To me, it, you know, it seems way overkill for a small environment. They don't they can't understand them as too much. I go by the fifth grader rule. <laughs> <laughs> if, if your policies and procedures are written in such a way that not a fifth grader can't figure it out, then it's too much. Yeah. <laughs> you I need know. to back it down. They often, you know, it's it that is like a a rule for writers and uh and content developers is uh, whatever you're doing is someone that if an eight year old struggles with it, you need to reconsider what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And while some people find that insulting, it's called lowest common denominator. <laughs> well, it removes a lot of questions and things where an employee may read it and go, well, I don't really know what this means, but I don't want to ask. Because I don't want to seem like I'm ignorant. <laughs> yeah. It, w- what you really want them to do is ask, or you want them to understand it when they read it. Um, you don't want somebody going, well, I, you know, I'm new and I don't want to seem like I have no earthly idea what I'm doing. So I'm just going to, you know, sign it off that I read it and, and be done with it and not really worried about mm-hmm. whether or not I understood it. Oh, and you're, you're absolutely right. That's what you got to treat what you're doing as you understand human nature. And human nature, is to panic, to you know, hide under something if they don't understand or don't know something. And sometimes human nature leads them to argue with you <laughs> if they don't understand. But as a rule in, in our world, we are never saying don't use policy and procedure templates. Let's say it one more time. <laughs> uh, we're not saying, we are not saying you should not use policy and procedure templates we're just saying don't use them as an easy fix. So well, I think I think you could sum it all up in what you said earlier, which is regardless of how you use them or not use them, you should know what the end result is. You should read it and understand it and make sure you don't just take whatever somebody gives you and put it in your drawer or whatever. You gotta make sure you read it. Yeah. What we're simply saying is the template is for you to start. That's it. It's just a starting point. It kind of, well, it's a template. I should have looked up the (laughs) definition of template. (laughs) It's a framework. It shows you how to go about it. But choose something that reflects your organization in some way. Don't just get, uh, you know, the easiest one or the cheapest one you can find. You know, and, and if you're just trying to find those kind of things, find one and study it. If you're put in the position, and some people are, and we understand that, where you do have to get the cheap ones or the easy ones, and it's not because it's what you want to do, you need to study them. They're going to take some time. But so, read so them. according to Google, according to Google, oh, you've looked <laughs> a template. It up. A, yeah, I won't read all of it, but the template is material used as a pattern for processes. <laughs> there you go. It's a pattern. <laughs> it is not the thing. So yeah, that kind of reminds me of like 
when you know back in the day when people made their own clothes, they had patterns. <laughs> yeah, hey, still people still do that, you know. But I do remember, you know, mom having patterns all over the house, and that that was a thing in our house. And and I I took a sewing class. Things didn't go as well. <laughs> That's scary though. <laughs> <laughs> I made a pillow that looked like an octopus and by choice or just turned out that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be one, but it was a three legged octopus. But it was cool <laughs> and uh I kept it for a long time and uh, it actually may be in some of my you know, cedar chest or something. But and then the other cool thing I made was my brother at the time <laughs> was like <laughs> he's maybe four or five, uh, and uh, I made him an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little suit. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he looked at me like, you have got to be kidding that you want me to put that on. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not a fashion. He's never been a slave to fashion, but he's like, that looks stupid. So... There's there's my sewing skills. Now we're, we've uh-huh. had that little detour about patterns. Yeah, so let's bring it back around. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Uh, so so we cover policies, cover procedures, cover templates. Any questions? <laughs> Bueller, Bueller. Yeah, okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh, All right. Awesome. So that's our show for today. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, head on over to iTunes and give us a review. We appreciate everybody who's done that so far. Some great reviews. Really love the ones that talk about how entertaining the show is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, and also share us out on social media. We we have some people that are doing that on a weekly basis, and we appreciate that. That really drives up the uh, awareness of what we're doing. So keep that up. Also, you can head over to helpmewithhippa.com, our website, if you are interested in checking out more of what we have to offer. We also have courses that you can take there. No templates yet. (laughs) 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 We do have courses there. Oh, and you can leave a question there. We might even feature it on a future podcast. So remember, HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.